this is Reverend Donna Lewis coming to you from beautiful Salem. And tonight I see that Sweet Strong Woman has asked about how to get in touch with spirit guides. Now I've talked about this subject before in other vlogs and other, um, other media, but it's a subject that bears repeating because it's so very important to many people's spiritual practice. So I thought I would go over basic steps again. Uh, if you want to speak to your spirit guides, this is what you need to do. First and foremost, you need to set aside a regular time to work with this. Now, if you ask me why it's important to have a regular time, I can't really say that I know, except that it's always been stressed to me, and I've found that when I, both when I was learning to work with guides and also later, having a regular pattern was very important. It helps to build the channel, it helps to establish the communication, and to make it stronger. So if you can pick a specific time to do the work, that is the first step. Now, if on certain days you can't make that time, or if you need to change that time, that's perfectly all right, but do try to keep a regular pattern. Uh, next thing you want to do is to light one or more candles, because the candles will give additional energy for you to build your connection with and for you to bring through the messages. Uh, whenever you do any kind of psychic work, it does use energy. And there's no reason that it should use your energy uh, when you can light a candle instead, or several candles, and also, if you're already skilled in visualization, if you can create energetic batteries, such as a ball of light or pillars of light in the corners of your room. These will also create additional energy that can be used to facilitate communication. Uh, most, most, most important is clearing and releasing all excess energy both before and after you talk to your guides. Uh, we talk in, in first degree lesson one about the importance of clearing and releasing, and I can never uh, emphasize it too much because it is absolutely essential to good psychic practice. Uh, it's not called psychic hygiene for nothing. Um, next thing you want to do is you want to talk to your guides and say that you are sitting for communication with them, you're asking them to speak to you, to give you clear and reliable information, and also to keep out anything that might be negative or unwanted, but rather themselves to speak to you and only themselves. Uh, everyone has a gatekeeper guide. You may not know who your gatekeeper is. It does not matter, but they are there with you, and you want to speak to your gatekeeper and ask them to make sure that only positive and useful communication comes to you. And then you want to let it in, and what you do is you relax your mind. It's very simple, but it's very complicated because of the very simplicity. Everyone wants to make it harder than it is, and the truth is you only need to relax into it. But that's too hard for most people because they want it to be complicated. It really isn't complicated, but it does require certain things, and we'll come back to that. But what you want to do is to relax your mind, and that means that everything that comes into your mind is just allowed to go straight through. It doesn't mean you still your mind. It doesn't mean that there will be no thoughts or pictures or images, because if there are no thoughts or pictures or images, there will be no communication. You must let it flow through, but what you don't do is you don't grab onto it. You don't think about it. You don't react to it. You let it go through. You just watch it and either write it down or say it as it comes through. Um, now, it's very important that you bring no judgment to this and no expectation. You just want to let it come through as it is, because if you bring either judgment or expectation, you will warp the message. You also should not worry about whether this is real or imagination. You can worry about that afterward, but not while you're doing it. While you're doing it, you just want to let it through. Now, afterwards, you can analyze what you've got. You can say, oh, this is real, oh, this is not, doesn't matter. You can do that later, not while you're doing it. Now, what you will find is when you first start doing this work, it may be your imagination at first, it may be garbage, it may be warped messages, uh, and the first several weeks you're doing it, I wouldn't necessarily uh, expect to see great results because it takes time. Um, it takes time to start getting messages that you can trust. And once you've started getting messages that you can trust, it still takes more time to get good at it. It can take a long time to get good at it. And in fact, even after doing it for many years, there's always room for improvement. Um, you will know the difference between whether it's your imagination or whether it's a, a legitimate message when you start getting information that you could not have known and would not have thought. And this usually happens pretty quickly. Um, for me, when I first started to do this work, I first got images and pictures, because I'm a very visual person. Uh, other people may get feelings, they may get words, uh, you may even get scents or, um, or colors. Uh, but whatever you get, uh, if you're working with another person, you say it out loud. Uh, if you're working alone, it's good to write it down. 
Uh, you can try to use a tape recorder, uh, but as you get better with this, you'll find tape recorders don't always work. Uh, the energy can, can interfere with electronical machinery. Um, the energy will interfere sometimes with tape recorders, it will also interfere with cameras. In fact, uh, my cousin Lady Crystal uh, was once doing an interview with a local television station uh, accompanying a seance, and as part of the interview she did a reading for the cameraman. And in the middle of this, this camera, which was fully charged, stopped working because the battery was completely drained. The reading had taken all the available energy. Uh, and incidentally, the, uh, the, news station, the, the news program won an award for it because it was so interesting that this actually happened right where it could be seen. Uh, so these things do use energy. Again, light your candles, do your visualizations. Um, at the very least, light some candles, especially when you're beginning. Now, after you've been doing it for a while, you'll find that it's less important to have outside energy because you'll have more of your own. The more you do this, the better you get. Uh, it's like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it is. Uh, when I first started working with spirit messages, I could only do it for maybe 15 minutes, maybe half an hour at most. Uh, I can do it, could do it today for several hours. Uh, I have been known to do it as much as six hours at a setting, which, by the way, I don't recommend because even when you're really good, that's very tiring. Um, when you're finished, you want to ground, you want to release all excess energy. Uh, it's also usually good to eat something uh, or drink, um, drink something grounded, such as a hot beverage. Uh, maybe put your fingertips in salt or a little salt on the tip of your tongue. Um, and this will be beneficial. Uh, that is basically what you do. Um, and as I say, as you do it, you will come to know that you're getting good information as it starts to take shape and as you see things you would not have known. Uh, it is important to remember that the messenger always warps the message. Uh, if you're really, really good and you bring no judgment to what you're doing, you'll warp it very little. But um, it's hard not to have some influence on the message. And the reason is this. When the guides communicate with you, what they're doing is they're sending their message as pure thought. And it comes in through your crown chakra. Uh, and it gathers the words from your own mind. Uh, because spirits don't use words. And so words, pictures, or whatever way this message is coming to you is coming from within your own mind uh, to clothe that message of spirit which began as pure thought. Um, therefore, um, if you do not have the necessary words in your vocabulary, uh, the message will have to approximate them. Similarly, if you are either afraid to let certain things through uh, or unable for other reasons to let them through, you will censor them. Uh, if you won't let it through, it won't come through. Um, therefore, it's really important uh, when you do this kind of work to bring no judgment or expectation to it, because then you can get a much clearer message. If you come with judgment and if you come with expectation, you may just get your own thoughts mirrored back to you. That does happen. How do you avoid it? By having no judgment or expectation, and also by always bringing a grain of salt to your interpretation of the messages you get. Uh, it is good to be a little skeptical of anything. And my my, uh, my all-time favorite example is if Spirit tells you to sell everything you own and buy lotto tickets, don't do it. You have warped the message. Uh, but there are many other things, too. What you want to do with any message you receive is you want to take it in accordance with what you already know and with common sense. Um, that's always the best way to proceed. So this is a basic discussion of how to uh, talk to your Spirit Guides and receive messages. Uh, I hope it's helpful to you. If you have any specific questions within this, feel free to post them, and I will try to respond to them. And until next time, may you blessed be.